tell you I'm thinking about it. I really took some thought into it. And every day it's something. It's like a week ago. Every day, eh, I'm still thinking. Eh, I'm still thinking. I'm still thinking. And about three days ago, I go into her office downstairs at the residence, and there's a boot box in the car, <laughs> FedEx. And I know the company, and I know, and I just turned around, and I walked out, and her, Mary Ann, is there, and I said, yes, I saw it, <laughs> and I won't say a word if you want it, just don't say a word, she'll be so mad, but I'm like, I won't say a word. So now you three, and Mary Ann, <laughs> no, that I know, <laughs> I feel like a little kid. <laughs> Good to see you, David. You too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it got here quick. Ah, uh, another another year of progress, and and I think about just all the good that's happened and all the good that I've been able to share, not just around the state of Indiana, uh, but literally around the world. And it's just it's you know success breeds success, and it it attracts more, and people want to be part of it. And so I'm excited not just for what we've accomplished, but where we're going. Now, I want to dive into something you said because I think it is really important as we get to this point. The disconnection between church growth and society and church growth yet remains the most important and the need here is that y'all are here for two years and you're still thinking about this and you're still thinking about this vision. First off, do you still believe in the church's going to grow? I do. I haven't, I haven't changed my opinion and it's not just about this specific case. It's about I haven't changed my opinion since I stood in the corner of this office behind that podium um, with the Chief Justice Loretta Rush when we were talking about stepping up our um, harassment policies in our respective offices, different branches, but um, making sure that we were doing all we could. And I'll, I'll never forget, um, it was true in the United States Navy when I served in the Navy, and it was true in this office that we have a zero tolerance uh, for that type of behavior. And then this is an example of where I thought it crossed the line after reviewing that initial investigation. So I haven't um, changed my opinion or my mind. Um, I've been, um, I'm not gonna weigh in on each of these, I mean there are multiple legal cases moving forward at different um, speeds, uh, this being the latest example, uh, but we'll, with respect to the process, let those play out. I know he's running again for re-election. Do you plan on endorsing someone else for the AG spot for 2020? Well, premature to, to say at this point because the legal process is still playing out on three different cases. Um, and uh, I've said what I believe is um, that uh, he should resign. And that's where I remain. I want to turn to you now to uh, teachers. Just a few weeks ago, thousands of teachers were here right outside this door. Sure. Rallying for a lot of things, including teacher pay, yeah. resources. Yeah. I know you had the Teacher Compensation Commission yeah. going on, yep. uh, and we know that half the state budget goes to education. Just north of half. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, a percent or two means r is real dollars. It, it yeah, is. Yeah. Uh, and quite honestly, will anything at all happen for Indiana teachers in 2020 during the session? Well, the answer is yes, in the sense that you know something historic just happened this year. And that was we allocated an increased amount of funding to education, and as you mentioned, north of half of our budget. And and when you when you take out DCS and Medicaid, the increases that we're seeing in the the new funding was about 73 percent of the new funding went to education. And so not only did we were we one of the few states, top three in the country, to devote over half of our budget to education, but we increased it at a historic, unprecedented level, 763 million, plus we went out and found $150 million and said, we're gonna pay off, in essence, a bill or a mortgage for schools so that they could hopefully devote that to teacher pay increases. The good news is they did. Um, they said they would. We had up, uh, up in the House chamber, at one point, the urban, suburban, and rural superintendents associations, and they said this funding level exceeds our expectations and that we hear you we're going to get this to teachers we're going to work to get this to teachers because all those contracts are locally bargained and um, and they lived up to their word they teachers 
by and large, about 99% of them, from what we've seen come in, that data that's come in from September 15th to November 15th during all these local bargaining uh, contract negotiations, 99% um, receipt of pay increase. What I have said is that may not be good enough this past budget session where we allocate those dollars long term, on ongoing. What I've said is I want to be, and I said this last year when I unveiled my legislative agenda and administrative agenda, uh, I want us to be in the top three in our neighborhood, 10 and 11 states, maybe in the Midwest. And I want to attract teachers to come to Indiana. It's going to take some help from those local bargain contracts, um, but we're putting more dollars into the funnel that we hope at this point gets to teachers. And, um, and so we'll look at, that's part of what the Teacher Compensation Commission is looking at is, in addition to just uh, total dollars going into the funnel, who's putting those dollars into the funnel? And how are, and where are they going? And are they efficiently getting, most efficiently getting into teacher paychecks? And so it's not just a one answer will solve the problem. It's, it's collaborative. And so there will be a lot of progress made on this front um, that will ultimately get to teachers. I, again, we've made a lot of progress. My gut tells me, we're still waiting on some of this data to come in from the contracts. My gut tells me we made significant progress, but we're not there yet. And we have a ways to go. And so what is that gap? And that's the first answer that teachers, taxpayers, uh, parents um, need to know. And, and most importantly, appropriators, uh, that all the tax dollars that are coming in um, then get reallocated into different uh, priorities. I know you're waiting on the commission's results to come back, which is probably after session. Spring, yeah. But can you guarantee that teachers will see a raise in 2021? Well, they're getting one right now. 99% of them are getting them now that will be kicking in off of this, the budget that we just passed this year. The most important thing to me is that we don't do this every year, find ourselves in this situation every year. And so what I want to make sure is that we have uh, the clarity going forward, that we have uh, the sustainability and the certainty um, in a systematic way, that uh, a formulaic way is how I've described it. It needs to be, you know, here's where we need to be, here's our goal, and, and here are the sources of the dollars, and here's how we get there. That's what we'll decide this year. I'm changing gears quickly to um, marijuana. Yesterday, Democrat Senator Karen Talian filed a few bills. One of them would decriminalize marijuana possession of less than an ounce statewide. And Republican Rep. Jim Lucas, he's also pushing for um, yeah. at least decriminalization. First, what are your thoughts on decriminalizing marijuana possession? And do you think, is Indiana destined to legalize marijuana? No, I don't. To answer your last question, um, I, I've, I've taken a couple oaths of office. One, uh, when I joined the Navy, put on the uniform, swore to uphold the laws, um, and one, assuming this office, another oath. Uh, and, and so I would say that their intent um, should be directed at um, the federal law that still treats marijuana as a controlled substance and illegal. Now, for whatever reason, states have had the ability, they don't have the authority because it's illegal, but they've had the ability uh, to go out and, and, and operate uh, as if it were legal. State of Indiana and this administration is a law and order administration and state, and um, we won't pick which laws we choose to follow and which ones we choose not to. So the first step would be uh, for them to direct their attention and actually making this idea legal. And I have even said, and I'm sympathetic to potential medicinal use, if it, if it truly, there are a lot of drugs um, that uh, have to get FDA approval that, that probably would be very beneficial, but they have to go through a process, a medical process. And 
Marijuana has not done that. Now we have a, one of the best agricultural schools, one of the best medical schools in the country who have agreed to do some of the research. Um, so if, if it is legal, uh, and in the federal government we're serious about um, drug interdiction or the medicinal use, or recreational for that matter, um, I have concerns about that, just because I talk to other governors, some of which it's legal in their states, some of which have six-year supplies of marijuana on the shelf right now, and they thought it was going to be the answer to everything. And what they're seeing is, for any benefit financially that it's brought into their state, it's caused a lot of expenses, like increased THC level in babies' bloodstreams at the hospitals, like workplace accidents, like uh, interstate accidents under the influence, um, like addiction, um, like uh, the potency of the THC uh, in today's marijuana is far greater than, forget Woodstock, black, you know, two years ago. And so all the expenses that are coming with legalizing these drugs, look, there was a survey that just came out here this week as well. You mentioned some of these bills were filed yesterday. There was a survey that came out this week as well that said one in five American high school students have vaped marijuana. So I would say, do you think more of that will come if it's legalized? I would say yes. Or do you think less of it will if it's legalized? Because the argument is, is if we make it legal, we'll be able to regulate it. Hasn't been the case in California or Oregon or what. So, you know, um, I'm not ready for legalize it all because of all these potential adverse effects that we're seeing around us um, for the pursuit of money. However, again, sympathetic to from a medicinal, a medicinal uh, perspective, we need to learn more, and at the same time, I would say their um, attention and energy would be better spent trying to actually make it legal. And then real quick, Kim Tingle on Facebook asks quite directly, when will he, uh, you, legalize marijuana for recreational use, or at least let us vote on it? Uh, well, I, I don't, um, I'm not a king, and I don't just legalize things on my own. It has to go through the whole uh, process here, and I would, I would recommend that she, in turn, not just share her, um, share her interest or desire with me, but with also um, her representatives, both in the House and the Senate. Um, and uh, she, she should start with her direct representatives and her direct senator and make her case known, and, and we'll see where it goes upstairs as well. Real quick, the impeachment proceedings happening right now as we speak. Will you support and campaign with President Trump in 2020? Uh, two different questions. The lead in was impeachment and, or maybe it's because of that, but um, I, can, I can tell you this, on, on his watch, um, we have the wind at our back and the sun is out and the state has more people um, because of the federal regulatory and tax environment and our state's attractive federal and or our state's attractive regulatory and tax environment and our workforce and our location and all of the uh, community amenities that we're now being able to promote um, we have become um, not just a um, state on a roll but we've become a model state and it's on the president's watch this has occurred and we really have a partner in terms of getting a waiver for our health care program, in terms of getting a waiver on a workforce development program. So um, Indiana, I don't think, has ever been better positioned. Um, and it's because of Exhibit A and Exhibit B, before and after uh, this administration. So I absolutely want to work with folks who want to continue to uh, help Indiana move forward, and we'll do just that. Are you planning on campaigning with the president in 2020? I, I've, if he comes here, um, I'll be there. And uh, and but you know, Indiana may not be as competitive um, uh, in terms of the presidential election uh, as some other states. Uh, right now, he's in very good standing statewide. And then, real quick, uh, vaping. Do you believe tobacco and vapes should be raised to 21? Uh, I do. Uh, I think cigarette, and it'll be on my agenda. And and vaping. Uh, again, if you, if you want uh, more young people to do something, legalize it for uh, everyone. And um, 
and, and I can tell you that the studies that are coming out about the, the 100, 300, 400 percent increase of, of vaping and vaping nicotine and vaping marijuana in high school and middle school. I, I mean, I always talk about how I felt like I was getting away with something, chewing gum in class. And, and now middle sixth graders are talking about vaping marijuana and the ease of getting it. And, and we know that it has an impact on the development of the brain. We just do. The younger, the more. And this is a, we need to do all we can to prevent Hoosiers, Americans for that matter, but Hoosiers here, um, from ever starting a habit that could uh, have an adverse health impact. And two last quick questions. Do you support Indiana banning flavored vapes across the state? We're looking at it, and, and again, we're working and, and watching and we'll continue to work with the FDA to see how they weigh in on this. I don't, I don't want to do anything that uh, uh, gets in the way of someone who is trying to quit smoking um, and be counterproductive, but I have major concerns about some of these flavors that are geared toward kids. And, um, and uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll to be continued on that front. And my last question, I got a really interesting tweet this morning. I'd ask oh boy. I asked our viewers oh to, you know, ask me questions. What do you want me to ask governor? Uh, Anything under the sun? Uh, There's one that really stuck out to me from the first dog that we opened. He tweeted at me and asked me to ask you. Oh, of course he did. <laughs> yeah. He wanted me to ask you, what is did. Governor Holcomb going to get for Christmas? <laughs> He's a clever one, that Henry. Um, tell him I'm going to get him uh, an elliptical so we can spend more time together. <laughs> I love it. Governor, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, David. Great to see you. That's <laughs> good. That's good, Henry. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's...